Hello tanks and tankettes and welcome to a pair of viewer replays or rather a pair of replays from the same viewer. I couldn't really decide between either of these ones so in my typically massively decisive fashion I decided to do both. They're both going to be in the MT25 and they are both going to be pretty good scout games in their own way. This first one though, we're starting off with some classic passive spotting because it's not something you see being done on a, a huge number of maps and apparently this is a really good spot for it as we're going to see. Now there's not going to be a lot happening over the next like two minutes so while we're waiting for Russell to rack up ludicrous amounts of damage comparatively speaking, let's have some nice music. And so here we are, more than 3,000 spotting damage later. Not bad for, what was that, two minutes? Just about that. So there's only a couple of enemy tanks left on this side, and of those that there are, they're not very healthy. And Russell has nipped back up to the spawn area to help out. Although his teammates didn't necessarily need the help, but it was probably better to come up here than to head up the other side. We fast forwarded a little bit here because, uh, well, there wasn't really anything happening in the meanwhile, except that E25 is somehow still alive, they're determined not to die. Uh, but as for the rest of the enemy team, well, although both teams have suffered a fair few casualties by now, uh, their team seems to be winning quite nicely uh, and it, it's really just a couple of base defenders, artillery and that E25 who is not going down without a fight. So Russell moves up and actually skirts the cap, doesn't want to let them know he's coming, uh, but they might do anyway. He might have been spotted whilst firing at that enemy WZ because he doesn't have sixth sense on this commander. And so he has to rely on Russian Sixth Sense, i.e. when your hit points disappear, you've been spotted. And in this case, well, it was the S35 and... Uh, actually, no, it was just the S35, but it's the S35 with a big gun that hit him, so it hurt rather badly. The VK also came charging down after him firing the PCR for some reason, but managed to flip themselves in the process, so that's not really an issue. 
There was also another hit from the SC thirty-five uh, A. Uh, no, I always say that. I always get that wrong. It's the S thirty-five CA. For goodness sake, brain. I don't know how I got into that habit, but anyway, that has a nasty gun, and it nearly nobbled him there, but somehow he got a bounce. So the armor on this thing can be quite trollish. Even if he died, though, they would have killed that bathtub and. All that would be left is artillery, but as it is, thanks to RNG, it seems like uh, Russell is going to be the one to get the kill, or at least get some damage out of it, because of this, of course, has a, a bit of a pew-pew gun. It's only uh, 57 mil. Given that it is a 57 mil, by the way, it does seem like a weirdly high number of HE rounds to be carrying there, but anyway, maybe they've got reasons. So that was a patrol duty and a scout, unsurprisingly, 3,800 spotting and assistance damage with uh, just under 500 of their own damage. But it was basically all that spotting from that position early in the match that made this into a really good game. So yeah, apparently that bush is pretty good if you can get to it. And especially if you've got uh, the view range, you could just light up everybody trying to cross and pick up a whole bunch of damage in the process. It's not always going to work out that way, of course, but you never know, it might be worth a shot. That brings us on to our second replay, which stands as a nice contrast to the first one, which was uh, largely about passive spotting. This time round, we're going to get a much more active style of scouting. And if you're wondering why, uh, well, you just have to look at the two maps. There's not a huge amount of scope for running around like a Mad March Hare in Province. It's these days still not a particularly big map, and just the nature of the map means that that uh, middle open ground is very exposed. Whereas in this map, well, there's still exposed open middle ground, but there's a bit more terrain to play with, as Russell is doing here. He's already run down here to try and get some spotting in, get a bit of spotting damage, although he's not done a huge amount so far. But he's not going to just stick around in this position. And he is going to get to use his gun a lot more. And you do have to use this gun a lot. You know, it's a low damage gun. It's definitely a pew pew gun, as I said. But one of the nice things about the Soviet 57mm is that whilst it shares a lot of characteristics with the British six pounder gun, it is a heck of a lot more accurate. Now, still no sixth sense, which uh, <laughs> is not ideal on really any scout tank. Uh, for spotting in bushes, it's very, very useful. But even when you're actively uh, running around and expecting to draw fire, it's still very useful to know when you may or may not be uh, actually visible to uh, the enemy team or not. And in this case, there is a Type 64 around somewhere, which I think is what he's cautiously trying to spot here. But he's also just trying to use these bushes to see if you can pick up any enemy tanks to uh, uh, hopefully uh, get some uh, fire on from his allies. Although there's nobody immediately nearby that can do that, in fact. Uh, the tank destroyers that are near the cap are currently occupied with a 1375, which has just gone a bit nuts and presumably has rushed in there to try and kill artillery, which they've uh, not actually managed to do, but they did spot that artillery for uh, their own team's RT. So there's no RT in play at this point, but it was bottom tier RT anyway. And given that this is a tier eight game, uh, that's maybe not as big a factor as it uh, would be if they were top tier. So there's that Type 64 who he can easily pen. And uh, it's just a matter of needing to beat them in terms of the right of fire. But he's also managed to give them a little nudge, because one of the other characteristics of this tank is that even though it is very mobile, it's surprisingly heavy for a light tank. If you get to ram into, say, an ELC or something, they're going to come off a lot worse than you are. So it's a, quite a, a useful characteristic. You're not going to want to try it on many uh, medium tanks, and there are certainly other light tanks where it would be a bad idea. So actually knowing which tanks you can safely ram would be uh, pretty smart all in all but when you do get to do it you know it's a useful additional little source of damage so the type 64 is out of the way which is good because that thing can be quite dangerous and that leaves russell free to move up and maybe try and get some shots into the rear of those heavies that his enemies uh, that his allies even are pushing and he can also try and uh, 
auto spot some of the tank destroyers that are up here though he's got to be careful because again no sixth sense so he's not going to know exactly when he is or isn't spotted and we know for a fact there we go that hellcat is still up there and although he did kill the type 64 he lost rather a lot of hit points in the process so it's not like he can afford to take a lot of hits at this stage he's also discovered where that Jagdpanzer 4 moved to so that's uh, that's quite useful. I, I think it's a Black Prince trying to fire at him there. Maybe? It's not entirely clear. So, he, rather than stick around where he could uh, get hit from behind, he has uh, pulled back to a slightly more sensible position. And all the while, he's just picking up some nice spotting damage, uh, up to nearly 2k already, in fact. But he's not done yet, he's not content just to hang back in a bush and uh, hope his allies shoot things that he's lighting up. I mean, there is certainly a bit of that, but no, he wants to get some more direct damage done himself. And this isn't a style of scouting that you massively see much of these days. At least not in my experience, I mean, bear in mind I don't play a huge amount of World of Tanks anymore, but... Um, Outside of the frontline mode, where you actually had quite a lot of space to stretch your legs in a, a fast tank, uh, for a lot of maps these days, um, they're just not very conducive to doing a whole lot other than supporting teammates. But in this case, well, he is just running around looking for opportunities and actually managing to find some. And this is possibly one of the better maps for it as well. I mean, this always was a not terrible map if you could get to the right positions for light tanks uh, but it really did depend on uh, what the enemy team was doing at any given moment so anyway his team that has pushed round have encountered uh, heavy resistance and have been pretty beaten up themselves and if they go down all that's going to be left is Russell and the uh, tank destroyers but they've They've cleared out the back at this point. There's no tank destroyers behind him, no enemy tank destroyers, so he doesn't have to worry about anything sneaking up from behind. There really is just artillery at that point. So they're distracted with the Oni, uh, who is still reasonably healthy, and he's able to use that to come in and dispose of this Italian medium tank. The T-43 dies in the meantime, but uh, rather than circle back round and go for that Black Prince, he leaves them to the Oni and instead goes off to hunt artillery because they pretty much have won this at this point. It, it's been a, quite a close thing, but he has managed to uh, really help out quite a lot, I would say, considering he's bottom tier. So there's the Arty who could potentially flap him at close range, but he's able to just beat the guy's gun traverse and uh, the arty wasn't willing to take the snapshot so he goes down the black prince goes down and that is that 1729 damage done and a further 2300 spotting and assistance so he got another scout medal in that one so <laughs> he was still doing scouty things absolutely but uh, considering the average damage of this gun is uh, yeah i can't even remember offhand it's what 75 something like that that's not a bad result. That's definitely not a bad result. And it was, once again, enough to put him at the top of the team list. So, we had a bit of both in that uh, uh, in that pair of replays, really, didn't we? We had some nice traditional passive bush spotting, which, again, isn't something you can do on every map these days. And then, in the second replay, lots of whizzing around and looking for opportunities and pew-pewing at things. So it was a nice mix, I thought. So if you enjoyed this pair of replays, you can do all the usual things down under the video. And uh, of course, as always, stay tuned for more.